Today happens to be International Ice Cream Day, and who doesn't love a good ice cream float? Man, I remember those from when I was a kid. That was the best thing ever. However, now that I've grown up a little bit, I've realized that maybe soda with all of its artificial ingredients and caramel color and all that isn't great for you. And so it turns out there's a really healthy and delicious twist on ice cream floats. We're going to be making them with kombucha. And so I am delighted to have my dear friend and colleague, Hannah Crum, the kombucha mama herself here to talk to us about all the different things you can do. And then we're just going to make some floats. Hannah, hey, how are you? Great. Hi, Nira. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to share about kombucha floats. And then I even have a root beer float that I'm going to talk Ooh. about, but it's not using any uh, root beer. So um, I'm excited to share what we've got going on. Tell me more about that root beer. Oh my gosh, that sounds fabulous. Yes. And so this is a homemade root beer syrup. Mm -hmm. um, we have a kit at Kombucha Camp that allows you to uh, create root beer flavor. So that could be root beer flavored kombucha, water, kefir, jun, oh. or even just making a syrup and it's made with either sugar or raw honey, so you get to choose your sweetener of choice. And um, once you make this syrup, oh my gosh, first of all, it smells amazing. And because it's made with the actual ingredients that comprise root beer, so that means we have, let me just introduce them to you. We have sarsap sarsaparilla, might be familiar to bark. And so that's in the little pieces. We also have sassafras. This one happens to be powdered, I think, Lately, we've only been able to get the bark, but it has instructions on how to use either ones. And sassafras is um, this lovely ingredient that has been used by Native Americans uh, for a really long time to help with like fevers and different things like this. It's got a lot of wonderful um, properties that are so great. Plus it tastes delicious and it gives it that characteristic root beer flavor. Next up, we have wintergreen. So some of you might remember wintergreen lifesavers if you've ever had those. So it's, it's a mint flavor, but it has this other, gosh, I don't even really know how to describe that, that flavor profile, but it smells amazing. And it's from a bush that not surprisingly stays green all year, which is why it's called winter green. And then the ever boring slash exotic, I'm just teasing about the boring part, vanilla bean, which is Yay. the pod of an orchid flower. <laughs> I know we've come to equate vanilla with plain, and yet vanilla is anything but plain. She is oh, exotic yeah. and beautiful and delicious. And so we take all these ingredients, we decoct them, which means we put them in a pan, we boil them, we add the sugar or the honey to it, and we allow that to turn into a really lovely syrup and so whether you add that then to flavor your kombucha, you can also make your own root beer soda by combining some of the syrup with some uh, bubbly water, which I have here. So um, I am using a classic vanilla ice cream, and I think you're going to show us some of the different uh, things we can use instead of ice cream to make our floats. I also have here today some pink lemonade kombucha. This is a strawberry Ooh. lemon thyme. Um, and also my favorite in the summer, elderflower lemon. All of these are going to go really great with that vanilla ice cream. So I'm going to start assembling my floats and why don't you share what you've got? Yeah, those sound really fabulous. And I love that we both chose elderflower. So you obviously made yours. I did go to the store to buy them just so that people know you can purchase kombucha to do this. You do not have to make it, although it's way more fun if you do. I'll definitely put the links down below for people to be able to connect with you. So the first kombucha that I have is just a straight up elderberry. And this is by Buddha's Brew. Absolutely delicious. Get all of the wonderful benefits of the elderberries in there. So that's great. Can and I then, just pause right there and just say, I love Buddha's Brew. It is one of my favorite kombuchas. It's a local brand there in Texas. Uh, Kimberly and JP are wonderful people, and you will find it all over uh, different places in Texas. It's got like a sweet, sour punch to it. How do you find their kombucha? Sarah? I love their kombuchas. I really think that they're very deeply flavored. Like I definitely get good, strong flavors from them when I drink them. And one of the things that I absolutely love is that there, and it says so right here on the label, like this is a small batch. So I love right. that because I feel well, like you I, get 
What? You and I, when we were sharing them, when we were together in Texas, we made little root beer sodas out of it. So like, if you don't have enough kombucha to go around, one of the things you can do is just dilute it. Or if the flavor is too sharp, you can dilute it with um, some water, bubbly water is what we like. I think we use the Topo Chico. Um, and it just, it gives longer life. It can also shift the pH. And so you get a really delicious flavor. And for folks who, you know, maybe are new to kombucha, that's a great way to tone down the sharpness if that's a, a flavor profile you're not used to. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's always great. That's actually my favorite summertime spritzer because while I love kombucha anytime in the summer, I want to just cut it a little bit so I can have a little bit more of that wonderful flavor and make it really easy to rehydrate. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so I got two other kombucha flavors as well. One is Strawberry Serenity by GT. This one tends to be the most popular one. You see it at almost every grocery store. So I'm sure lots of people are very familiar with it. Yeah, so GT is the person who literally founded the kombucha industry in that he put it in a bottle and sold it in the store back in 1995. So while wow. people have been homebrewing kombucha for hundreds, maybe thousands of years, uh, he was the first person to put it on the shelf and spawned an entire industry. So I definitely recommend trying GTs and no matter where you are uh, in the United States or maybe even globally, you should be able to find a GTs kombucha and give it a try. He's got so many different flavors. Oh, so Strawberry many. is going to go great with that, that ice cream. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last one that I have, and this one is a limited release. So I have not actually had this one before. It's by Brew Doctor and I love their kombuchas. Um, I especially love some of their unique flavors that they do. This is called Just Peachy. And so I think this is going to be really great. Would you I, do me a favor and read yeah. the ingredients on that one? So this is brewed tea. It's water and green tea, peach puree, it's got peaches and ascorbic acid, cane sugar, live kombucha cultures, and a bunch of the ingredients are organic. And Yum. it says summer lady flame crest, flavor crest, green tea on the front. Well, the reason I wanted you to read that for me, Mira, is um, Brew Doctor started originally as a tea house. And oh. so they were really well known for their teas and different herbal blends. And so a lot of their kombuchas have really a lovely blend of different ingredients that we might not see in a traditional kombucha. But I think this is a newer line for them, like you said. And so they've added the peach puree, which is totally different. So I'm excited to hear how that flavor turns out. But they're based in Portland, Oregon, and oh, also nice. have national distribution. So you can probably find them in a lot of your favorite grocery stores as well. That sounds great. And I'll link all of these down below so that people can go check at the store and see if they, you know, have them there or they can ask for them. That's always a good way to get things you want into your grocery store. So I chose to go dairy free with my floats and I got my favorite vanilla, which is foragers. And uh, it is a cashew milk one of the things that I love about it, which is so fun, is when you open it, there's always a little message on top, hello, delicious. <laughs> and, then, and then I was looking for a sorbet. I thought it would be really fascinating to use sorbet as part of my float. Unfortunately, believe it or not, the grocery store that I was in had no sorbet that did not have crummy ingredients in it. They had other things in there that I did not want to put in my body and I certainly would not recommend, so I didn't get it, but I found something new. These are Blendtopia smoothie pops and this is not an ad for them, by the way, this is not sponsored or anything like that, but I happened to find it. The ingredients are good. It is organic, it is non-GMO. And so it comes in a little smoothie pack like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open it and just crush one of these into the, um, into the glass. Uh, I did also want to share one thing before I do that. I see Hannah's got a very traditional setup when it comes to her glasses, which is fabulous and always wonderful for enjoying a float. However, you don't always have to do that. If you want to make it a little more fun, I happen to have a Waterford crystal glass given to me by a very dear friend of mine. I also have this amazing teacup. This is actually one of my favorite teacups because it holds just like this. And I've also made floats in a wine glass before. If you have a really big bowl wine glass, that can be a really fun way to do that. So um, Hannah's going to talk about something important about 
uh, floats as well while I start putting my stuff in here. So first I'm just going to show everybody, this is the elderflower lemon. So you have elderberry. These are the yes. same tree, just the different parts. So the flower, of course, turns into the berry in the fall. And in the summer, the elderflower has been a traditionally um, harvested beverage throughout Europe. And so you may have heard of elderflower sodas, elderflower liqueurs, and things like that. It just, what I love about it for kombucha is the flowers themselves, and we sell bark, berries, and flowers, including elderflower, is that it has its own yeast on it. And so it makes it super fizzy. So I'm hoping everyone can see, and then you can see some of the little yeast from my kombucha is hanging out here at the top. And then I love to do lemon zest because it gives you that really pretty floral oil note from the lemon as well as some juice. So let's see. This one's a younger kombucha, so it hasn't built up as much fizz and I'm just gonna pour that into my vanilla ice cream. I have these lovely cups from a fermentation festival that I was at. So um, now that we're able to get back out again, hopefully we'll see more of those fun festivals, but look how pretty this is in the glass. Of course, we can fill it up all the way and I'm using a stainless steel straw. So this is something else that we have. You know, I've always been an eco-friendly person and I love drinking out of straws. Um, some people say, well, isn't kombucha so acidic? Isn't it going to be bad for my teeth? And the, the real answer is no, and it, and it depends. Um, your oral biome is going to be different, and so it's going to impact people in different ways. So to get past all of that, I just love drinking my kombucha with a straw. Um, and I have a straw as well. I think they're the best things ever when you have your own straw. You don't have to worry about plastic waste, and it really just is a good thing for the environment. So have you tried yours yet? That is so delicious. It's creamy, okay. delicious. It's a little tangy from the lemon. I got the floral note. The berry, and I'm going to mix it with the strawberry. And there we go. That beautiful fizz happening. Oh my gosh, if you could hear how much it's sparkling. That's fabulous. So I'm going to taste mine. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Oh, very strawberry. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, since mm. we're talking about strawberries. And this one, I'm going to, I already pre-cracked a little bit. Look, ah, it's ready to guys <laughs> burn out. This is all natural. There's no forced carbonation when you're making it at home. Um, but since it's so fizzy, I'm going to very quickly pour it into the glass. And this recipe is also in our book, the big book of kombucha. So pink lemonade was the flavor that really got my husband hooked over a decade, gosh, almost two decades now. And um, we have, haven't turned back. So in it, we also have bamboo straws. And the benefit of a bamboo straw, especially with children, is that it's softer on the gums. And mm. so if anyone in your family is a little more sensitive, and honestly, I have had these same straws probably for almost a decade as well. They just are really uh, have a long life to them. And of course, they're going to biodegrade at the end when you're done with them. What do we think? Mm strawberries and cream is what's hitting me now. So good. <laughs> That's fabulous. And I think it's hilarious because we did not discuss this. I also have a bamboo straw. <laughs> They're great. Great minds they? think alike. So I'm, I'm going to take the peach and I'm going to put it in here with my ice cream and look at that. Oh my gosh. Fizzy, fizzy, fizzy. And oh my gosh, the, oh, the aroma coming off of this is unbelievable. That's great. So I am going to try this one and then I'm going to, I'm going to try something else. That is so good. The, just the combination of the two. And I love, like, I just want to slurp up all that foam on the top. The so here's one of the other things that I wanted to try though. I, um, during the season, I like to dehydrate things. These are strawberries that I dehydrated. And so I'm going to grab just a few of these and I'm going to see what happens if I put them in my float. And make like a strawberry peach float. And the answer is it doesn't fizz anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's going to have to sit for a while because they're very hard. They got to rehydrate in this. I think I would have, yeah, I was hoping that they would fizz a little bit. Mm, still delicious. And oh, they're, oh, wow. They're Flavorful. really good dipped in kombucha and ice cream. <laughs> oh. So here we go with the root beer syrup. Now, you can probably measure this. I tend to be an eyeballer. It smells amazing. It does have a little bit of that medicinal smell, but we all know because it it's that concentrated flavor. And so I'm just going to pour a touch here in my glass. 
to give it that root beer syrup. And this, you know, this is how sodas were made back in the day. You went to the pharmacy and they would mix up herbal decoctions and different herbs and essences. And then you just mix them with gassy water. And so though I, I like to think of kombucha as like the original soda because sodas are essentially trying to emulate um, that natural fizz that's present, the health benefits and things like that. Of course, today's sodas don't have many health benefits and that's why um, doing the fermented soda is so good. Look at the head on this. I know, that's amazing. Oh my gosh, fizzy, wow. fizzy, fizzy. And because it's the syrup, you can customize a flavor profile. So if you want a more robust root beer flavor, you can choose that. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add some more because it is just so good. I am definitely gonna have to get some of that and try that. Like I'm watching you do that and I'm like, I'm so sad that you live on the other side of the country because I wanna try it. Yes. Oh, and this foam is amazing. Mm, so good. Yum, oh yes, this is really tasty. Plus it's customizable, so. Mm. That sounds fabulous. Yes. It's that right. classic root beer float flavor. Yes, what do you have? I'm going to make my last one, and I saved my Waterford crystal glass for this. And I'm going to do the elderberry with the vanilla. And there we go. Oh, nice fizz. Look at that. So beautiful. And it's just fizzy, fizzy, fizzy. Ooh, and then hold it up higher. There we oh, go. That is so pretty. I know. And that color is gorgeous too. That little pinky shine from the elderberry. Mm. Oh, that is so good. And you know, this is so refreshing. I don't know if you know this or not, but it's supposed to hit triple digits here today. <laughs> so it's a perfect day to make a float. And uh, I'm so glad that you shared with us all of the fabulous things that you can do to make your own as well. And so if someone wanted to connect with you more, where would they find you? Yeah, and Kombucha Camp, Camp with yep. a K. So that's our website, kombuchacamp.com. Of course, we're on all the social media channels, including videos on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, you and I have done some things together, so you'll find us there as well. And then of course we have all these wonderful products in our store, which Mira is gonna share links for. So thank you so much for having me here today. And then of course our book, The Big Book of Kombucha, you can find that anywhere your favorite books are sold, including your library. Uh, so definitely check it out. It's 400 pages, 260 flavor inspirations, a bunch of recipes. So it's just got everything you could want to know about kombucha. But thank you so much, Mary. Really love being here with you today. Thank and, you um, so much, Hannah, <laughs> and cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. Take care.